Welcome, everybody, to the PWZ podcast. I am Rick Del Santo, and joining me, as always, on this glorious Thursday night, Showtime, Marcel Williams. What's going on? We are here. Uh, we, we're on a roll. We're oh. legit on a roll. We are. Hang on <laughs> one second. It looks like we are having a little technical difficulty. Okay, nope. Uh, we are still live on two of our platforms. One did not... Uh, start working i'll have to look into that as of late later so um let's see all right so we're right now we're going to be talking about um let's see here uh aew dynamite for this week which i thought it was a pretty good episode there's some things i didn't necessarily agree with or things that i thought was awkward and i'm sure that you judging by the look on your face you know exactly what that is the Guardian of Chaos is in the chat. Hello, Guardian of Chaos. How are you? Thank you for tuning in on YouTube. Uh, we are here uh, to talk AEW Dynamite. Uh, and don't forget, this weekend we will be talking about Rampage and Battle of the Belts as well. So, Marcel, do you have anything to share before we start rolling? No, we go. I mean, yeah, we do a quick plug for Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling. You know, tomorrow night we got alley fights going on. At 662 Cole Avenue in East Haven. It's uh, at the Paradise Alley training facility. Start at 7 o'clock. And this countdown to Point Blank as well. April 30th. Same place at the Paradise Alley training facility. Same address. Same time. Different card. Main event. Matias defended PAPW Championship against Bloodsaw. Lucas Chase and Chris Battle. I'm looking forward to that match. I think it's going to be a really fun match. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And God knows what could happen after. I mean, uh, you know, Lucas Chase isn't any time any gold uh, contract holder, so anything could happen afterwards. No, nah, absolutely. He got a he he is he he got a win win type of thing. Even if he yep. loses, he still got a, a first class ticket to any championship for PAPW. But tomorrow, Alley Fights return with uh, Alley Fights champion Dustin Flash Waller and a few other uh, in company as well. Battle Academy, Steven Garcia, all your PAPW favorites and new faces. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We got um, what we got in there tomorrow. Bobby Buffet is going to be there. Who uh, he's mm-hmm. quickly becoming one of my favorites. That's uh, showing up. He's a Monster Factory guy. Yeah, got Sean Venor is going to be there. Uh, Hunter Tarka uh, uh, from the Battle Academy. Hustle and Muscle. Yes, Hustle and Muscle. Jay Bricks and Richard Stone. Uh, they kind of impressed me the last time. I had a lot of fun watching them. Great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Came a long way from the firm. Huh? I seen it break yeah. away from the firm. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> uh, that should be a lot of fun, though. Tomorrow night is going to be... Uh, it's going to be different. And don't forget, it's also going to be taped for the uh, Alley Fights TV series that's, uh, that premieres here each and every Saturday morning, 11 a.m. I got a lot of fun doing. I got a video to finish up uh, before this Saturday. So keep an eye out for that Saturday morning. It's going to be a lot of fun to uh, check out. Absolutely. Maybe be sure to uh, subscribe and like and get all the notifications from uh, Pro Wrestling Zone. We got a couple new subscribers. I'm very excited. I want everybody to please, um, if you guys subscribe, send, drop us a line email, and uh, say hello. You know, we're always here to chat and uh, give you a shout out. Absolutely. Maybe at the end of this, when we get some, uh, we got more viewers, we could do some uh, Q and A's as well on these yeah. chats. Absolutely. I'm always looking forward to that and down, uh, down to do that. We got, um, let's see. Uh, let's get down into AEW. I'm trying to shoot, send this out to a lot of people so they can, uh, you know, tune in. Maybe they don't know about it. Um, let's see here. We opened up with uh, CM Punk and Penta. How many times has Penta changed his name since being in uh, <laughs> AEW? I think at least three times. That's right. Now he's uh, Penta Oscuro. Yeah. Was he Penta, what was his? What, uh, I don't think he came in as Pentagon Jr. He was a uh, Pentagon Jr. in Impact. Uh, at first, I think it was Pentagon at first, and then yeah, Pentagon Zero, as you said. I think he added Zero to it this time, and yeah. then yeah, now it's like three times. Yeah. But we still, 
We 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 still got Ray Phoenix. who's still the same name. He's still the same. But uh, Penta is still <laughs> one hell of a worker. I'll tell you that. He's yes, still he one is. hell of a worker. Uh, Jonathan Sardi, hello. Happy to see you. Haven't seen you in a while. I uh, hope to see you at Paradise Alley tomorrow night. Uh, there's a lot of shows. Hit me up. There's a lot of shows I want to tell you about uh, uh, that are coming up in Connecticut. So, absolutely. So, uh, what do you think of this Punk and Penta match? I enjoyed it. All I got to say is Punk is on top of his game right now since his return uh, last fall. Um, he continued to uh, show the work that he's been doing, even down to the storytelling. It's him and Pentagon. Pentagon put in some I, – I tell you what, before we even go into this match, last night's uh, Dynamite was legit chop fest. Like, we're gonna like, get into that. We will yeah, into that. we gonna get into that one. But it was a it, it hashtag chop fest last night because it was a whole lot of chops. But CM Punk is proving that he could work with anybody. And uh, Pentagon, you know, he they had a little mix up where you know he did the try to do the her and it landed wrong. He covered it up with his leg uh, injury that he sold later uh, earlier on. But right. um, still continue with the storytelling and miscommunication in the middle, but still bounce back. And the ending with the GTS catching them in the midair, CM Punk continue up the ranks of AEW. What do you think of this version of CM Punk? He's a little bit different than he was in the past. He's like a, what do you want to say, older, wiser? He works. I believe older and wiser. That's what usually happens when you you know yeah. you get older in the wrestling business. The you, oh. you decide to tone it down a little bit and do longevity. Longevity is the word of wrestling. Right. If anybody want to know what the word is of wrestling, longevity. And um, he's not um, <laughs> terrible. He's not terrible by any means. He's just mm. and he's 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 working pretty much the same style, but he's altered it uh, for his age. I guess you could yes. say. You know, it's uh, he's not doing too many crazy things. I mean, <laughs> with the exception of the blade job he did that one time. So yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> he has excuse for that. You know, yeah. dog collar match and the of match course. with Eddie Kingston at full gear. But um, yeah, he has his moments. But long if you don't do the Cody, you know, juice every match. But um, right. nothing against right. Cody. You got to tone it down now where he's at. But um, CM Punk is continuously going up the ranks, and we're probably looking forward to either. The CM Punk versus uh, Adam Page or Adam Cole for the AEW Championship, World Championship. Do you think Punk has another? I know we've discussed this before, but do you think Punk does have another title run in him? At this Absolutely. Age? Do you With think the, he came back to prove himself that he can do that? Um, absolutely. Or one of the one of his goals. It's one of his goals, but he. I kind of feel like he he proved himself. After this seven year run, you know, he didn't just jump right on into deep waters to say he won the AEW World Championship. He had to go through the rankings, go through certain workers. And I think he's on top of his game right now between yeah. him and uh, Brian Danielson. Danielson is, I mean, that's a guy, no matter what he's gone through and no matter where he's wrestled, mm -hmm. whether it be WWE, Ring of Honor, Japan, the Indies. He just keeps getting better and better and better as he ages. Yes, he does. And right now, like you said, he's on top of his game. He's probably, uh, you know, he's worked at different styles when he was in WWE. Now he's mm -hmm. in AEW, so he gets uh, there's a lot more leeway there. Absolutely. And some of these people that he's putting on, you wouldn't think were, I guess, quote unquote, dream matches, but damn, he's putting on some of his best matches he's putting on in years. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, he is. And I'm lo I'm only looking forward to to more from him. Nah, absolutely. It's, it's this guy. Um, he made a statement when he returned last fall, and he continued yeah. to make it. He had uh, probably feud of the year, or the year not even over with yet. But him and MJF, absolutely. You know? So it's still more per It's still more work for uh, CM Punk to go throughout the year 2022. What do you think about um, say AWE or AWA, Excuse me, AEW. Is I swear to God, I haven't had that many beers yet. So, <laughs> um, just a couple. AEW tag team titles: Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus uh, defeated Red Dragon. I'm kind of, in a way, surprised that it ended up that way. But um, 
maybe they're just saving Red Dragon to take the titles in the future, maybe at a pay per view or or such. Because I have a feeling that they're in line for a title run very soon. Yeah, this was a surprising ending for me. I really thought Red Dragon would take it, you know, just to get that momentum to Adam Cole. Um, right. But it didn't go down that way. But still, this was an unbelievable tag match. Um, Jungle Boy continued to impress me, even with Luchasaurus. And, uh, you know, Red Dragon, they they know what they – these guys. They, they've been always tag team champions. Uh all the titles all over the world NXT. and it, yeah, yeah nxt everything it's just these guys continue to uh prove that they can work with anybody as well but uh at the end you know Jack, jurassic express taking it continue to yeah. rain but we got surprised at the end didn't we yeah why don't you tell us about that ftr i yes. guess they're next up they i have some more f- gold yeah, I have a feeling that um, FTR may be the ones taking that title uh, and just holding so they can walk out there with six belts. I don't know. I mean, I, it would have been great for, you know, Red Dragon to take it because yeah. we had the uh, the last uh, Jurassic Express take the titles away from uh, the Lucha Bros. Right. And it, that was like a face versus face match, and it's mm-hmm. like now what you gonna do another face versus face match? FTR, it's like the hottest thing right now. So I would like Red Dragon to take it, and then we had the Red Dragon versus FTR uh, confrontation. Yep. But we may still get that. I think we will. Um, it's a match that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, and down the road, I don't. God knows when we're gonna see it. Um, <laughs> There's so much going on, like in AEW, you can never really predict as to what's going to happen. Nah, you. you can't. You know, because there's like there's such a rich, deep, rich roster. A lot of people, a lot of people don't like AEW. A lot of people are being vocal about it nowadays. Yeah, they've they been just available. Keep, yeah, yeah. It seems like more so now, people can't just sit back, relax, and enjoy professional wrestling as a whole. Of course not. You know, it's, yeah. it's 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 I, I I have grown up to see these fans just continuously uh, bash whatever they don't like, and we'll talk about a few things that uh, ended up on the comments and Twitter that people just don't understand. You know, they don't understand their wrestling history, but uh, it just it's just unfortunate how these fans I call them keyboard warriors. Well, they're, they're, <laughs> the keyboard warriors I like to sit here and continuously. Uh, vent on social media sometimes social media is good sometimes social media is bad and uh most of the time is bad in certain situations yeah absolutely um you know i used to get riled up watching wrestling and hit twitter and kind of was just like it started i started to sit and realize you know what i mean it's like it's really not that bad Mm. i just stick out point out what i like if i don't like something i don't sit there bashing the entire company for it it's just that one moment you know what i mean Mm -hmm. it's a lot of fun professional wrestling is a lot of fun it brings people together uh you know it's just an enjoyable thing nah Uh, wrestling is a variety show it's a variety show for everybody i've been to wrestlemania is where it's people from all over the world i'm sitting next to somebody that's from ireland that's that you know it's 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 a it's a sport that's for everyone to sit together and enjoy without any violence. Yeah, we join a lot of violence. You watching what violence. you just said, right. yeah, we <laughs> watching <laughs> violence. We enjoy the good violence of professional wrestling, right. but you know, without the outside, you know, right? They, they hate on the outside. The hate of the real world, basically. <laughs> exactly. Uh, there's no better time to be a talent or a fan, says the Guardian of Chaos. That is absolutely true. I have not seen the wrestling scene this alive and electric since, what, the late 90s? Mm-hmm. So well over 20 years? Yeah. 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 It's, since uh, it's a, the, the, the 20, the, the, the 2005s yeah. or 2010s, that's the last thing you, you know. Yeah. It's an amazing time. I mean, in the last, like, what, prior to the pandemic, I should say, we saw the rise of the indies. Where indies, So many indies were getting a, a, a lot of attention. And then, of course, 
along comes AEW. And then, there's, you know, WWE, I mean, they're not on the top of their game. They're doing whatever they're doing, but they're still surviving and making billions of dollars. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing wrong with that. People got to understand WWE is a business. They're corporate, uh, whatever you want to call them, corporate force. And they're just going to, they, they, they're a merchandising company on top of it. You know, they produce a wrestling company. Not everything. You're not going to like everything on the TV show. I sure as hell don't. And we found that out Monday night. <laughs> we found that out Monday night when we went live that, uh, you know, so there is going to be moments where we do like, but you can't like everything. Like you said, like, uh, like, like Marcel said, it, it's a variety show wrestling. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it was a struggle Monday. Yeah, definitely. Uh, at three hours, uh, I'm going to have to watch that in parts. From if, it, if it wasn't a work night, I would have some hard liquor next to me that whole yeah. three hours. I'm drinking tonight. I got the, the Vermont IPA. Where is it? From a, oh, it's not going to show up on the screen. It's from Montreal. Screen, yeah. I, uh, I, guess, I guess they don't allow that. I guess the green yeah. screen don't allow that. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, well, I'll I tell you what I have. What do you got tonight? Nothing. Guys, Air. You still didn't go. Mm-mm. Nah. <laughs> I'm going to have to mail you a case of beer for this weekend. <laughs> for real. For Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, from there, we went from Captain Sean Dean defeating MJF by Kano. This was Wait, quite the enjoy. Be, what what did I miss? Dude. Yeah, before you get to that, it was two segments with the uh, Blackpool Combat Club. Uh, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. They're ready for Rampage right. for the six yep. man tag against the Gun Club. Yep. And uh, you mean the Yudas. Ass Boys. Yeah. <laughs> the Ass Boys? <laughs> yes. That's that's legit their name. See? That's no, how no, 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 uh, no. I did. That's what Dan, <laughs> Dan Housen started calling them the Ass Boys. So that's uh, it caught on, you know. <laughs> No, the gun well, we know well, what... well, we know Boxley how he feel about him. He said he can't stand him, yeah. and uh, he wanted to destroy him. And well, Yuta said uh, last rampage between after him and Moxley that the work just begun. So I'm looking forward to this team and the six man tag, and I can't wait till they start bringing in some trio titles. This is gonna be interesting. You got a lot of trios out there that's uh, ready to put in some work. Um, I'm gonna get into this uh, real quick. But before that, um, what do you think about Wheeler Yuta? Now, last uh, week we we discussed uh, his match with Moxley and how he made or Wheeler Wheeler a star. What do you think about him joining the Blackpool uh, Combat Club? I mean, the story was told from the beginning. They want people that can legit take the punishment to get into the club, and he took the punishment. He paid his dues, and now he's in the club. So. I mean, it should be more people that's going to be involved in this uh, whole group. Hopefully, it'd be a, a woman that be involved and makes it make it even different. Um, Serena Deeb, maybe. Serena Deeb is off the chain. I love Serena Deeb. She's like one of the greatest women. Like, if you watch her, she's like uh, like just a great technical wrestler. Like, I didn't mm-hmm. realize it, and then all of a sudden, I'm watching her matches, and it's like it's like watching Regal wrestle. Like yes, it's just absolutely. Like wrestling over and over, it was fantastic. She's a woman of a thousand holds. But yeah, they, but yeah. before you, we we while we talk about Serena Deeb, I kind of think she's my favorite between her or um um uh, Ruby Soho uh, for oh, the Owen Hart uh Foundation tournament. I'm looking forward yeah. to that. I'm thinking that she may win it or uh, Ruby. Yeah, we're gonna have to dig dive deep into that as it gets closer to the but end. But we do know what the first round is gonna be. Yes. Jamie Hader versus Tony Storm. We still don't know what the bracket is yet, but I don't even, you know. Uh, well, like I said, uh Tony needs to take five minutes away from his arguing with bots to <laughs> decide this. Um hey, the, the bots will segment? be in the tournament. Let's just say the bots yes, will be in the tournament. There you go. <laughs> What's the next uh, segment that you were mentioning? I didn't t- write down every single segment. Oh no, those were the two segments that, that was a confirmation. Was but we jumped okay. right on into the MJF, which was my favorite segment. There was shit. We were talking about something else. Damn, I got you covered. We're talking Rick. about Wheeler Yuta. Wheeler Yuta. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, trios tags. Okay. Yes. Uh, I had a discussion with somebody today about this. 
Now it's been there's been a long, 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 long talk ever since what AEW's uh, start on cable TV about the trios tags, right? Mm-hmm. It's been discussed so much. I thought of this today in the discussion that because somebody mentioned, I was just like, wouldn't it be easy? Not easier, but wouldn't it make sense if they just ended up bringing back the Ring of Honor trios tags as opposed to ended up just bringing in a new title. I mean, they're already having every AEW champion on their thing, would, on their shows. Wouldn't they just bring in uh, the Ring of Honor trios t- titles? Um, if I'm wrong, please tell me. <laughs> well, we're looking at an AEW brand. So yeah, well, I, I mean, you, really, you... you really don't want to take a ROH title. And then make it a, a. I mean, you're trying to make two separate brands here, which I is I can't. I don't know how much uh, pressure that Tony Khan is under with these two brands together, but how much you know. is he under for how much? I mean, it's really hasn't been two separate brands as of yet outside of the SuperCard of Honor event. If you think about it, no, you're right, but it is a lot of planning. You know, yeah. he, he, you got you got to put all your your players in place. You got to know who to keep, who not to keep. Uh, you know, you got Deanna Perrazzo as the R H uh, women's champion, and then you got Mercedes Martinez, who's an intern. So it's like, it's you know, it's it's, 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 it's gonna wrestle each other. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of contract uh, conflicts and stuff. So, truthfully, if you're gonna make your own trio style, just make your own and just make your own division. And just use RH right. as developmental, if you want to. That kind of kills me that uh, people keep saying that they're using that as developmental. I mean, it's fucking Ring of Honor of all things. It's not like they're starting up a uh, OVW or some bullshit. You know, you know what I mean? I understand. It's Ring of Honor. Glorious Don't put the heat on me, brother. I just, no, I, I'm I, not. I mean, I, just... <laughs> I mean, I believe if I remember correctly that uh, Tony Khan was even quoted, if I remember correctly, uh, as saying that. So. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's, it's good just to, because he got too many people on his roster. He could take them and just put them right over there to develop. Well, that's why he, he bought Ring of Honor, and then he's going to end up using it as a second brand. Yeah. You know what I mean? To to give some of these guys that are employed there that are never getting used, I guess you could say. But you never uh, know. ROH may turn into like NXT. It'd probably be the hottest brand next to AEW, you know? It may work out. As long as... It doesn't turn into the Skittles brand of NXT. The Skittles brand. Man. Am I wrong? You're right. I, I got to tell you, though. All right. The, we'll, we'll, we'll get back into this MJF thing in just a second. Did you watch NXT 2.0 this week? <sighs> yes, I did. Did you hate it? Come on. Yes. Yes, I did. I hate oh it every God. week. I thought this was, I don't know, man. I thought the last two weeks were really good shows. And I'm, you know, I was very judgmental about 2.0 when it came on. But tell me that tag team gauntlet match wasn't great. It was all right. I'm sorry. Well, you know, man. I mean, you like your NXT 2.0, which I don't understand I why you still like call it 2.0 NXT 2.0 anymore. I was... I was we, very, we know it's 2.0 after like three months already. I know. So, I, I mean, was, I was very judgmental towards NX 2.0 when at first I didn't like the change. You can even talk to me and the court talked about it. It's a terrible brand. It was a terrible brand after a while, but I think that they've actually tried to improve it as of late. And I thought that, um, what's that tag team? The brothers that are the with the singlets. Um, I forgot. I know you. They look like the, the amateur brothers. They were in there for four straight matches before Come getting people, beat. Y'all watch NXT? Can y'all give us the name of the team? I forgot. I'm sorry. Yeah, I it's something actually, brothers. Yeah, well, we got that part. Uh, <laughs> I bet you I can punch it in right here. NXT tag team brothers. Watch this. NXT tag team brothers, Rick. Rick, Rick. I don't know. <laughs> it's gonna. Go, it's gonna go. That's gonna be the next new team. So. You know, the thing is, I'm gonna NXT, end up being NXT like, brothers. <laughs> I'm gonna end up being like, oh damn, you! Oh, the Creed brothers. There you go, the uh, Creed brothers. They're a great tag team, and I, I, I thought that that was they lasted in there for three straight parts of that 
actually all four four parts of the gong. All four parts. Yeah, I, I thought they put on a tremendous performance. They did. I mean, damn. It's, 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 Maybe I, mean, I, I don't know, man. Maybe I'm falling. It's WCW. Into the Maybe I'm drinking the Kool Aid. I don't know. I, it's WCW 2000, but it's, it's like TNA 2009. I mean, the, with, the, the, with the with the Rain with the in it. With the Rick Steiner kidnapping, I'll give you the WCW 2000. All right, like that. But I, I can't know. believe I, Rick Steiner getting kidnapped. That's the toughest dude in wrestling, and he's in. He's getting kidnapped. <laughs> I thought it was, I don't know. I thought that was ridiculous, but I also was like, I don't know. As of late, the la- like I hated the last, you know, I hated the shows before that, but this particular show, I, the last two shows I actually enjoyed. I don't know. Maybe, uh, maybe I'm going crazy. Let, let, let me tell I'm you. Not gonna after the same I'm not going to say the same thing on Monday Night Raw, though. After seeing Braun Breaker versus Gunther, and then after that, it was a good match. Then after that, when they swing over to Rick Steiner sitting in the cage, like he's sitting on the toilet, <laughs> trying to drop a load, sweating. <laughs> I, g- I right. gave up. You're right. I You're gave right. up. I thought that was terrible. You know who also I thought improved? Now you're probably going to freaking be like, all right, I'm hanging up now. <laughs> who I thought improved since the last time I watched it was, go easy on me, Von Wagner. So I fans, thought he was the absolute shit the first few times I saw him. And this fans, time, I'm going to let actually... y'all know, I'm about to take this arrow and hit this X leave studio button. <laughs> I've lost this. Because I've Von lost. Wagner, <laughs> <laughs> it, that's the last person I would know that would come out your butt. On to MJF and Sean Dean. That, that's it for now. All right, all right. <laughs> like I said, he. I tell you what, we got Van, Von Wagner doing better than me, so I, I just, I'll just take the hit for that one. But he, hold on, before he, he's on, there's no reason why he's doing better, and I'll tell you why. It's because his father was in the business before. No offense, Wayne the Train Bloom or Von Wagner, but that's why you got signed. No offense. <laughs> it's not because he was working indies for fucking years, okay? <laughs> so, pardon me, Von Wagner, if you ever hear this. All right, so MJF yeah, and Sean is. Dean. I'm, Are we you know, doing I'm a show for NXT 2.0 now? Since you like it, I, please don't tell me. I, well, at least points. it's two hours. Bullet points. Bullet points. You the know, for Raw and 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 NXT, and I, I can't praise everything that NXT 2.0 does because, like I said, I I was I've been impressed with the last two episodes. But for months and months and months since they started the 2.0 thing, I couldn't. It, it, it took me a very long time. But I thought the last couple episodes uh, were quite the improvement. And in that particular, uh, the gauntlet, I really liked. I love. I liked it a lot. So, Did Captain you know Sean, the last show. Okay. The the be, this is the last thing about NXT tomorrow. You know the last show, like all the hills was like basically going over and <laughs> looking like they on top. Like there was no baby face. Yeah. You don't care? All right. Yeah. Next. Don't you think that should happen sometimes? No, it it makes, not the whole no. show. No, I get it. I get your I, I get where you're going. I get what you're saying. You're right. Um it's also WWE TV. They need to make it interesting so that when the pay-per-view comes, that's when all the baby faces win and get their fucking it's typical logical logical WWE booking. You know what I mean? The heels kick the shit out of the baby faces, and then on the big shows, they used to do the shit at MSG. You know what I mean? They'd do it every mm-hmm. week on TV, then they'd go to MSG, and boom. And that's it. Captain Sean Dean defeated MJF by countout. Wardlaw came out of nowhere. Was Well, not really out of nowhere. He decided to destroy security yet again. MJF left the ring and he was behind him before he damn near had a heart attack and got away. Uh, let's see. And uh, as the referee Bryce Remberg was counting, he uh, MJF got a mic and begged him not to, that he would triple his pay. For a second, Bryce Remberg did look like he was like considered it, but then he started counting again and counted MJF out. Sean Dean uh, defeats MJF by count. Yeah, uh, this was very creative. 
everything from from the beginning to end. Even when Warlow knocked out the three security guards in the back, you seen that shirt missing. So you knew something was up where he was somewhere as security. Right. Um, but when he popped, you know, when he popped behind him, I was just like, okay, he could have caught him. But we all knew what the game plan was. He was saying they're trying to make MJF lose the second time to Sean Dean. Sean Dean then beat him before, and he beats him again with this creative countout. And we have seen a lot of countout finishes. And I mean a lot. Some of them be stale, some of them be old, but this one was very creative. It had all these security guards that he was knocking down, all probably like what, like 13 or 15 security Everyone guards. That charged, they <laughs> just went flying like he they like they ran into a brick wall. Yeah, and then MJF try to run. He try to run to the yep. ring because he know that count out was coming. And then I like the way the camera view was pointing towards Bryce, where like he's doing the count six, seven, eight. So you're like, wait, this match is still continuing on. So he's trying to make it to the ring, and he didn't make it. And then, like you said, he tried to bribe him. He said, "Whatever, Tony Khan paying you, I pay you triple." And yep. Bryce sat here, thought about it for one second. Ten done. Bell rings, and. Biggest pop probably of the night. Uh, Warlow is they continue to uh push this rivalry without any action going on, and that's creativity. And once Warlow get his hands on Sean, even Sean Spears, like he didn't power bomb him yet. And if he would have did that, it that roof would have went off. So as uh, soon as Warlow decides to like get his chance to power bomb whoever that is that is next, whether it's Sean Spears or MJF. It's gonna erupt, but we build a star right here, Warlow. Absolutely. I mean, the guy's over as it is, uh, and he's been, and it's this has got to be one of the biggest slow burns in the history of pro wrestling. The last what two years, especially in the modern era. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to do that now. Flash, everything was flash like fire. You know what I mean? Yeah. So this this was just oh my god! It's been a, such a slow burn, but the fans are behind it, and. It's just a matter of time, you know, before mm-hmm. he gets his hands on MJF. I'm guessing at the next pay-per-view, uh, there, there may be a match or or at least he'll get his hands on him. No, nah, absolutely. And MJF and, you know, his lawyer, uh, Sterling, Mark Sterling, he said that, you know, what's in the contract with Warlow, that he put him to work wherever he wants and whatever he wants. And I guess now we see him facing the butcher. Warlow and the butcher? Warlow and the butcher. When's this? When's this? Next week on Dynamite. Right, next week on Dynamite. Okay. That should be interesting. The Butcher's the big dude, right? With the I always get the two confused. All right. Butcher's the... <laughs> it's okay. <I'm... laughs> that beer kicking <laughs> in. Only... He no. was all over NXT just then. Now it's like no, 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 no. I was like, yeah, I didn't forget about my NXT conversation. I, I mean, I'm just saying that the butcher and the blade, those two I'm always like, which one is which? So um, the butcher is the one that's the singer in the metal band. He's got the abs all of a sudden that came out of nowhere, right? <laughs> yeah, and the, the and, like and, old man and right? his rock band uh broke up, yeah. so that's why you know he got oh. in shape now. Oh, all right, so he must have been drinking his beer again. So, nah, I think he stopped the beer. That's a damn shame. Uh, <laughs> John, Jonathan already says they will pop heavy for Wardlow when he. Finally gets his hands on him. I agree. I think, like Marcel said, that top of that building is going to pop off. So Absolutely, that's going to be amazing. Let's see. After the match, MJF got in Remberg's face and shoved him, but Spears broke it up. Camera uh, cut backstage again. Where Wardlaw? Wardlaw. It's not the beer. Wardlow. Wardlow. What did I say? Oh, Wardlow. Wardlaw. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I shouldn't wear my glasses. I might be able get, to actually. Yeah, yeah. you're about to get crucified on social media. <laughs> That's all right. Body I mean, bots. It's a, oh, yeah. The bots are going to come after me. That's why we have no followers. Uh, Wardlow <laughs> was still beating people up, and he demanded that MJF release him from his contract. Like I said, it's a great story. It is a great story. Can't wait for it to happen. Uh, also, then we saw a vignette, uh, Darby Allen video played where he challenged Andrade El Idolo in a coffin match. That's going to happen. Yeah, Wednesday, that's going to be next Wednesday on Dynamite. Wednesday. Yep. 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 Second second coffin match for Darby Allen. I put Darby Allen in some weird matches with some guys that, Jesus Christ. 
huge compared to him. Yeah, he's like the size of a twig. I tell you what, my first my first experience with Darby Allen was at a uh was Work uh, Bomb Show, right? Nah, I had my first experience with him with uh Cody okay. at the uh what Fighter Fest that was, it was. Oh, uh, one okay. Of those, one of those uh, AEW events, and I was like, that is dude skinny as crap. I thought like he wasn't going to be like get over by his size, but he proved me wrong since the start. Like he has continued to become like one of the staples in AEW. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, correction, pillars. Oh, of AEW. A Malachi Black then addressed Fuego del Sol. He wants Fuego to be afraid of the shadows. I didn't get this promo. I'm sorry. You didn't get it or you didn't see it? I didn't. I, I seen it. I just didn't get it. Yeah, well, Malachi Black is fucking weird. So he is weird. He's one, guys, he's one of those guys. He puts out weird promos and people either get it or they just look at it. Look at the Edge promo. That one with the freaking weights or whatever the hell it was. Everybody Your friend? was like, this yeah, this your guy's buddy? fucking nuts. Like, that's your buddy, yeah. Yeah, he's my buddy. I had a conversation at work today about him. People were freaking, he was like, oh, he's going to have another title on. I said, the guy's 50 years old. There's yeah, not, whoa, a, whoa, whoa. Is that wrong? Not that? A, no. Hogan no. and Flair was over 50 when they got championship. You can't do that. I just don't think that Edge is in need of a title. He's, uh, how do you say, it? injury prone? That guy walks out his front door. He breaks a toe. Like, seriously. <laughs> it ain't that bad. It ain't that bad. Maybe not that it, bad. Nah, he, Maybe how many injuries that he has since he came back? How many injuries that? He only Wouldn't tore the tricep. He tore a muscle. In the, yeah, he tore a tricep in his second match back, that last man standing match, correct? That was recorded? No, it was actually the, uh, the greatest match of all time. Him and Randy Orton. That was a lie. The greatest match of all time. It, it, it was probably at the time, but that year, 2020, it was the greatest match of all time. You know what I think we should do? Now that we just, now that we're sitting here, and I'm sitting here, they, they act that up as the greatest match of all time. And you said maybe of 2020. Oh, 2020. 2020 was a weird fucking year because it was, we were in the beginnings of the pandemic, so to speak. Yes, it was. I think one of these upcoming episodes, we should go back and do a 2020 best of 2020. Let's find the matches. I mean, because really only two companies were running AEW and WWE. There was some little things here and there. 2020 was a rough year. It was a rough year. I want to figure out what was a, what was actually a good match in that year. The Boneyard match was good. That was the match of the year to me. No, you don't agree. Cinematic matches. That was the only and cinematic match that actually made sense. Really? No. What about the okay. um? No, uh, no. I'm. I'm uh, I just can't. I could not get into <laughs> it. I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was ridiculous. Um, and I know a lot of people put it over. And I mean, if that if you're into cinematic matches, like you said earlier, professional wrestling is a variety show. Yeah, all sorts of matches. All yeah. sorts of matches on one show. You can get a death match. You can get a high flying match. You can get cruiserweights. You can get whatever. If that's your thing, then so be it. I don't gotta like every match on the show. I'm just not into cinematic matches. It's, Listen, it's they're just they're just too weird for me. The greatest WrestleMania of all time happened in 2020 in the performance center. There was no fans. It went from Madison Square Garden to the Performance Center. Yep. I have a, uh, I still have <laughs> a, my shirt that says I wasn't there. Do you have that? I bought that shirt. I, 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 got shit. I wish I should have got that. Yeah. I got every, uh, my son got every sweater I brought him for every WrestleMania I went to. And uh, I wish I got that one. I wasn't there. Nope, I got one for me. I got one for my youngest son as well. And he just wore now. The funny part is he couldn't fit into it. The uh, but the other day, now he could finally fit into it. He wore it to school the other day because he was so excited. 
Then he could fit into it. It was a WWE shirt. Now, dude, he, he's starting to catch on to a lot of stuff. So, uh, wrestling wise, I'm glad that uh, he's starting to share my love of pro wrestling, even at six years old. They'll grow into it. That's how I did. None of my other kids did. I brought oh, my, they did? my oldest son, who's going to be 16 this summer. Uh, you've met him. Uh, yeah. He, 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 uh, I took him to a few indie events growing, you know, when he was growing up. Uh, while he had fun, he would never sit there and be like totally into pro wrestling at all. Yeah, and he doesn't like he, but but the funny part about it is now he always asks how you're doing. That's the funny part. And then, and then the other funny part is he goes, is every time he's like, Could we go to Paradise Alley when, when we come visit? So yeah. now that's all, I, yeah, now that's the one thing. So now I got to make sure on the 30th that uh, that I take them. The point Ooh, blank. Deal. Yeah. So my, my 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 oldest son is uh he loves he does not necessarily like pro wrestling, but he does love going to the Paradise Alley shows. Well I'm glad uh PAPW recruited a a, a fan okay. that does not like wrestling no more. And he watches the show that I put on YouTube every week too. There we go, see? Yep. There we go. It's worth it a little bit so we can keep up with the action a little bit. <laughs> This next segment, I really enjoyed somewhat. Nah, I really enjoyed it. Jericho Appreciation Society. Jericho is now a sports entertainer. Mm -hmm. I think it's hilarious, and some of the references he makes to classic WWF is hilarious. Uh, Did you see the... Did did you hit an intro before Judas played? uh, Refresh my memory. It, it was a signature for the old WWE of uh, 50 years of, of uh, sports entertainment. Yes. Yep. Uh, that's what, and he used that in an, uh, in a promo one time and I died laughing. Yes, he uh, did. And, and I'm sitting here like nobody else seemed to get it. Mm-mm. Like nope. the line. It was like, that was, a, and they used that intro. If you rent ever rented the old Coliseum videos that they had, that was like the whole thing. And it was the intro to a lot of their TV shows back in the day. Yes, it was. So, with the uh, with, with with the flying through the, the Grand Canyon or through the stars yes. with the WWE. Yes, what's yep. up? Uh, yep. Yeah, yep. Uh, so they Chris Jager, uh, Chris Jericho, Jake Hager, <laughs> not drunk, and Daniel Garcia defeated Eddie Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz. Eddie Kingston paid tribute to uh, Junkyard Dog coming out with the uh, the white T shirt with Thump written over it uh they all actually mentioned i think that tony savani sh- said it was 27 years 27 yes. years i believe since a junkyard dog has passed yes uh, it has and, alleged, yeah and especially the controversy of uh eddie kingston wearing his shirt because everybody don't know about the history of junkyard dogs so everybody really thought this dude was wearing a trump t-shirt that was wow. insulting donald trump. are you serious that's that's serious that's a shoot. People are always soon as he came, I already knew what that shirt was for. I was like, okay, but I, I understood I got it how people were seeing what that shirt probably meant somewhere else. But nah, it was actually it had something to do with junkyard dog. Soon I seen it. Everybody remember the white and the the white and red the lettering of the trunks. It was right across the back of his trunks. Yes. Ridiculous. All this right, is the right. world we live in now, you know. Yeah, well, it's ridiculous. We live in an <laughs> insane world. People are nuts. All right, so um, let's see. The Marina Shafir defeated Sky Blue. Uh, nobody cared about this match. Uh, I particularly don't even remember the match. Yeah, the crowd was not. Well, before we get into this match, we uh, think of the momentum or what's going forward with the uh, Santana, Ortiz, Eddie Kingston. Do you think they're going to do the stadium stampede again or blood and guts? Please don't do the stadium stampede again. Why not? I like stadium stampede. It was all right for what it was. You know why? Because you know why you didn't like it? Because it was a cinematic match. That's why. Yes. It was crazy. The one thing that I thought was hilarious out of it was when, um, in the first one, was when Matt Hardy was hiding in the ice machine. And then, you know, that was like the only thing because it was like unexpected and I laughed. But um, outside of that, it was ridiculous completely ridiculous you gotta get some slack to the cinematic matches there's some effort put in these 
Yeah, there's a lot of effort. It's crazy. <laughs> Anyhow, Marina, uh, Maria, Marina, Shafir. Uh, yeah, this match right here, it was not kicking in for the crowd, and it was a hot crowd last night. Yeah, nobody cared about this match whatsoever. Uh, I think she's going to be number 30, though. Was, this was just the popcorn match, I guess you can call it. Mm hmm. All right, so Team Taz, Ricky Starks, and Powerhouse Hobbs defeated Keith Lee and Swerve. This tag match was great. Ricky Starks was on fire last night, dude. Yes, he was. He was on. He was. He's always on point, but he was definitely on point. The charisma was out. Stri- Yo, know, Strickland, even better. Keith yeah. Lee, on top of his game as well. Even Hobbs. This tag match was off the chain. Like legit off the chain, and uh, hope to see Strickland and Keith Lee team up some more. It was real good. I'm so glad that this company is giving so much love to Keith Lee. It's well deserved because he, he was he really had some momentum in NXT, and then all of a sudden went to the main roster, and everything just shifted downward. It was yeah. just boom. Yeah, uh, the same thing happened with Killer Cross as well. Uh, once they got to the main roster, it was just everything was just wiped out from under them. And nope, you know, which is it's just a damn shame. So Keith Lee, uh, I think, you know, he's only been there a short while. What about a month? Maybe mm, a little bit yeah, over like a month and a half. I really hope he's going to shine here in uh, in AEW. And I have a feeling that uh, Tony Khan is going to let this work out. It's going to be good. Now he is like all these guys are starting to shine now. Uh, Ricky Starks, all these people that uh wasn't recognized in other places like they are used um like that real good. So I I just like the way these guys and then Taz got involved. Like this guy, he never get involved. He got involved last night though. So, yeah. Uh, I guess I guess he getting tired of losing. So now he got to put his hands on somebody. All these guys coming back out of retirement. Taz retired because he had a fucked up neck. I'd probably lose it if Taz came out for one more match. I probably would. I know. I know he'd be going in the gym with his with his son Hook. So if he's going to the gym, that means he must be ready for something. Yeah. Nobody goes to the gym for nothing now. I'm just gonna let you know that. Yeah, dude. I, I like I said, I'd probably flip the fuck out if he came out of nowhere and started just. Suplexing everybody left and right, cross facing everybody. Uh, he's one of the best race. man out there. All right, go ahead. Cut no, 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 we don't. Let's go back to Taz. No, just no man, it's, it's I'm just saying, I, I, WWE, I, WWE dropped the ball with him, and I can't admit that absolutely, but not for nothing. Like, he ended up injuring his neck and ended up out of there, anyways, like having to, forced to retire. But they they did they did help him out in a way by giving him a commentary job. So good on them, you know what I mean. But that's it. It was a great transition with him come yeah. going from there to he being a legend. Good he commentator. A legendary commentator. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yes. Thunder Rosa segment presented by a cake by Nala Rose, oh, and uh, she you know she gets her face shoved in the cake. It's just uh, one of those segments that did not need to happen. Yeah. <laughs> AEW has a lot of those, though, dude. Yes, they do. I can't admit that. I'm getting tired, and I can admit certain things that get on my nerves. I do get tired. These promos get interrupted. Can I ask you Every, a question? Everyone. How do you feel, without being politically incorrect, about Nyla Rose? Getting a title shot at the women's title match. A lot of people make a big deal about this. Are we are we, we talking about transgender or are we talking about how many title shots she's not had? Well, a lot of people complain because why is she fighting for the women's title? I mean, I don't necessarily, I guess I don't care either way, but it's just, I don't know really how to feel about it, honestly. That's just my opinion. To me, legit. I don't care. Yeah. Truthfully, what should have happened? She should have been the first uh, women champion, and then um, 
the first champions uh what so what was her name um ruby no not ruby the first uh women's oh, champion uh, Riho 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 yeah I didn't want I thought it was Riho I didn't want to say her name wrong yeah so I kind of feel like Nyla should have won it and then Riho you know kind of conquered and beaten Nyla Rose if right. they really wanted to build something around Nyla Rose but right. the thing is with Nyla Rose is she has she done gotten a lot of title shots <laughs> like it's I mean, been a lot always getting a title shot yo exactly. she always get a title shot and i have not seen not one person get as much title shots at this woman has got she has won the whole tournament that they had probably about a year ago was was yep. international tournament she won that and i was like okay well like give somebody an opportunity serena deeb was out at the time and like they was barely using her and she was even better but right. it's just it like now it's getting like every time I see her get a title shot, I get disgusted. And it's not because of her gender. It's because she continuously get these shots. I just don't understand. Like at least give her a break or something. Right. <laughs> so okay, that's my pet peeve with that. I don't care about the the transgender. She said like uh, people crap. online were complaining. It's like why does she always get the first shot? And I'm like, it kind of makes sense that complaint. It does. I have no argument about that. It does. All right. So after that, uh... oh, main the event. main event. Yeah. Sorry. It's Samoa okay. Joe defeated Minoru Suzuki to win the Ring of Honor television title. Basically, Suzuki was the transitional champion. I have a huge complaint about this match. And I think it's a legitimate complaint. Okay, go with your complaint. I want to hear this. I thought it was a phenomenal match. That's good. What the fuck was that? I'm sorry. Uh, hey, Google decided to step on in and do a run in. I'm sorry. <laughs> so it was phenomenal. She said that's match. good. So I guess she liked it the match. She agreed what I said. <laughs> it was a phenomenal match. However, the fucking picture in picture took away from the main event. You're only given this goddamn match, which I was looking forward to all week long. Suzuki versus Joe. I'm like, this is going to be phenomenal. This is going to be amazing. This picture in picture just takes that feel away once it goes into that picture in picture. And when they come back, it's like, Jesus, man, I'm not into it as much. It hurts the freaking product. It really does. Load up on commercials in between break in commercial breaks. This match, I mean, I don't know, man. I, I absolutely thought this match was going really good and just that whole thing, man, just kind of hurt it for me. So I got a question for you. Yeah, go for it. Would you rather watch this match with commercial breaks without seeing the match or picture in picture where you seeing the match? I don't want to see commercial breaks. I don't want to see before the match comes back. Just load up on commercials. Take yeah, an but, extra five minutes if you got to and just play the extra commercials. So yeah, you don't but, have to. But, but, but if you don't got no choice, which one would you pick, though? I can't pay attention. <laughs> Look at your face. <laughs> I, I don't know, man, because like I can't pay attention during people. Because if you were sat there, they say, oh, we be back for a commercial break. You watch all these commercials, then they come back and be like, oh, welcome back. Then you'd be yeah. extra pissed. You'd be extra hot. You're right. But at the same time, it's like picture in picture. I just like I can't concentrate on the match when it's in picture in picture. I think you need the commentary. That's what it is. Yeah. I need the commentary. I need to be paying attention to the match. It's just it's not like I don't sit through matches all the time. It's just it's a real pain in the ass. And I know I'm not the only one that complains about this. I, I've seen a lot of online banter about this too. That 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 definitely agree with me. It's it's an annoying thing. Well, they would did what they did back in the day. I remember they used to do where they have all these commercial breaks and then the main event had no commercial breaks at all. Um they don't do that no more. I don't know why. Um it's, it's corporate it's, greed. It is corporate greed. You know, each commercial costs like over one hundred thousand dollars, or probably more. I'll probably be playing them too, truthfully. So I mean, 
you know, we get those commercials over here, we be golden. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'll so so here on out while we do these premium podcast events, we will do a picture a picture while we talk to you and do our commercials while we do a picture a picture. <laughs> Courtesy of Rick Del Santos. I got ads I could run right now. You can Let's while talk. we still talk. <laughs> because I care about all you guys out there and how you feel about the show. All right, so that's pretty much it. I thought that Suzuki and Joe was phenomenal. Um, this match was hard hitting. It was. I mean, they this did, like, match was fucking, a legit chop fest. Joe was, was like two hundred chops in the first listen, five minutes of the match that neither man would go down. Joe put in some work last night. I'm gonna say that right now. He he was. And usually Absolutely. I never see Joe blowed up. But he was blowed up. He put on some work. It's been a while. It's been a it's while. It's been a while. Since, yeah. And I think, you know, I love Samoa Joe, dude. I think he was he was great last night. And Suzuki's that dude's got some of the nastiest chops known to man. Yeah, he does. All right. So there's still that. remember the match with him and Dan, uh Brian Danson. Yeah. Good match, dude. Uh, what was that guy's name? The basketball player. Oh, here we go. Tom Singh. Sat. I I hate Sat. Sanam Singh. Tom Singh. Thank you very much. Uh, he uh came out. The lights went out, and then you know they come back, and he's standing behind Joe. It's very dramatic because every time the lights go out, you know somebody's coming up. Somebody big. Uh, yeah, no point he was a former uh basketball player. Uh, the very first Indian uh, and Sikh player to be drafted into the National Basketball Association, the NBA, um, when the Dallas Dallas Mavericks drafted him. It's pretty amazing. So now he's transitioning into professional wrestling. Uh, He is being currently being trained, working with, I should say, being trained with Sanjay Dutt and Jay Lethal, I believe. Um, Now, from what I've read... AEW is transitioning with the Time Warner Discovery merger. Uh, they're transitioning and they have a huge Indian market with that. And so um, this guy's a gigantic star over there in India. So is having him on TV, yeah. Nope. So having him uh, get involved in such a high profile matchup is uh i guess a positive for this so we'll have to see where it goes from here we shall see i mean they have done many experiments you know the shaquille deal experiment and all these <laughs> other experiments and uh some have worked some haven't and uh this is a uh a, a good probably a good move towards indian market but i don't think it was a good move last night at the end because it kind of uh, put a little damper on the whole excellent show. Yep. I thought it was a weird ending and it wasn't very, it's kind of a blah ending. If you think about it, it is, it I is very unhappy about the ending. I was yeah. really happy. Uh, it was just kind of, I don't know. It didn't make much sense to me personally. People call it a, a, a WWE esque type finish. Um, I fully agree. I mean, it would have been better if they did it without the lights being out. I think that's the problem. Right. right. The lights went out. We always get a surprise. The lights went out this time. We got a damper. Well, so that's probably what the problem is. Time. No. Please, God, no. <laughs> I'm just saying. He shows up with a case of beer. <laughs> Anyways, that's pretty much it. That's our AEW Dynamite review. Uh, I enjoyed the show for the most part. There's a couple segments here and there that I was like, blah. But nothing major, you know? No, it was not major. Just a countdown to double or nothing. And then this Friday for uh, Rampage, which is going to be a two-match show, I think. It's going to be Adam Page defending the AEW World Championship against Adam Cole in a mm-hmm. second uh Texas death match in the uh Blackpool Comeback Club versus the uh 
the Gun Club and it's Rio's match. Special start time, 7 p.m. on That's TNT. Right. Yep, and then uh, let's not forget uh, Battle of the Belts on Saturday. Yeah, Three only match. one match. Bit. Well, we got two matches announced now, right? Because they doing the same. I have three matches. I have three matches listed. Oh yeah, three matches. Uh, the TNT Championship: Scorpio Sky defending against uh, former champion Sammy Guevara. Uh, Ring of Honor World Championship: Jonathan Gresham making his AEW debut against Dalton Castle. Yeah, there you go, my man. And Two AEW, AEW debuts. Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to those guys being in AEW. Uh, AEW World's Women Championship: Thunder Rosa taking on Nyla Rose. And uh, don't forget AEW Dynamite Wardlow, the taking on the Butcher Hook, make his Dynamite debut first ever. Yep, Owen Hart Foundation Tournament Qualifier: Britt Baker taking on um, Danielle Cam- Camella. Another Owen Hart Foundation Tournament Qualifier: Jungle Boy and Kyle O'Reilly. Coffin match between Darby and Andrade El Idolo. Tony Khan will make a huge announcement again. Talking about the bots, I'm sure. Um, he revealed the bots. We are going to be back Saturday night after Battle of the Belts, correct? Yes, so we are. Down Battle of the Belts and uh, AEW Rampage, and if we see some of SmackDown, SmackDown. some some of SmackDown, we'll the see. bullet points of SmackDown. We'll see what happens. So <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. Um, so don't forget tomorrow night. Eight, um, what was it? Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling Alley Fights. 662 Co Avenue East Haven. Tickets just $10. I'm going to be there. You can come by and say hello. Uh, Marcel, are you showing up tomorrow? Maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> I'm retired. You're retired. Yeah. All right. Uh, and not to mention, we got so much more. Uh, Tune in, everybody. Next week, I'm going to start uh, having some guests back on the show. Uh, so t- stay tuned for that. Two weeks from uh, this coming Tuesday, we got uh, no two weeks from now. Sorry. We got Sunset Steve Garcia coming on. I'm really looking forward to that. Nice guy. Uh, without uh, with, with that, I guess it's time to say goodbye. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Marcel, anything you want to say before we get out of here? Stay tuned. We'll be back here Saturday right after uh, Battle of the Belts 2 uh, to do this again. Thank you for joining us tonight live on YouTube and Facebook Live. And come back soon. Like, share, subscribe at PWZ Network on Instagram, at PWZ Podcast on Twitter and Facebook. And join me at Showtime Marcel on all social media. And the Rick Del Santos on Twitter. And be well, be safe. Good night, people.